In the heart of Bolsover Town stands the parish church of St Mary in St Lawrence, with its late Norman tower being one of the few surviving parts of the original church built in the late 12th and early 13th centuries, and where the bells have rung out for hundreds of years. Much of the original church had to be rebuilt after being gutted by fires in 1897 and 1960. But despite having survived the fires, the tower's beginning to show its age. Cracks and holes were clearly visible in the stonework. And a growing concern was that water was getting in. But at the beginning of May 2016, everything was about to change. was led by architects Peter Wogan and Richard Brook, with local builder Phil Turton and his team responsible for work on the Grade 2 star-listed building. But how had the project been made possible? Well, initially we got a grant from English Heritage, which uh, enabled us to do some research on what, exactly what work needed doing, um, roughly costings and things, mm -hmm. and then we applied to the Heritage Lottery Fund. We got £10,000 from the Garfield Reston Foundation and we got £3,750 from Ecclesiastical Insurance, their charitable section, which is called All Churches Trust. Uh, and we've raised some money ourselves by doing bits and bobs. So we sort of finally got all the money together. And within a matter of days of the project starting, the church was surrounded by a series of large ditches. Basically, the, the Victorians put in a, a drainage system that goes to soakaways. Over the years, soakaways accumulate dirt um, from, well, just so soil, uh, leaf debris, and, and they, they gradually clog up. So after 100, 120 years, they, they, they stop working. <laughs> so, so we basically started from scratch and, and, and reinstated that. With a new drainage system in place, work on the tower got underway. Old mortar was removed from the magnesian limestone walls and repointing began. Where stonework had, had been really badly affected by, by decay, we put uh, lead cap flashings um, on, on certain elements just because we couldn't weather them in any, any other way. Um, without some fairly major stonework replacement, which, which we didn't really want to do because that would affect the character of, of the tower itself. Meanwhile, the tower clocks were removed whilst essential repairs to the walls behind them were carried out. They returned the following week after being treated to a makeover. The dials were taken down, they were shot blasted, then powder coated, then a gold size applied, then gold leaf, and the gold leaf is 23 and a half carat old English gold leaf, double thickness. So it will, uh, the, the gold does last longer than paint because it's, it's, it's a, with it being an inert metal and you do get a, um, a shine off the sun, obviously, and the moon. And clock restorer Peter Lane had noticed something rather unusual about the parish church clocks. These circles here, mm -hmm. they're, they're here for a reason, but we don't know what this reason is. Mm -hmm. They're not a clue. They also got circles on the, uh, all the quarters as well. But normally a dial... A normal dial will be round or square. Diamond is a bit different. These are completely different. I don't know why. A possible explanation is that the circles of the clocks were designed to reflect those found in the windows of the church. Work continued outside on the slate louvres. And while some had had to be replaced, others were refixed and made secure but not before some serious clearing out. This is uh, nesting remnants from the jackdaws and the crows. And this is where the crows and the jackdaws under there 
have been year after year nesting and pulling twigs in and sometimes they fell into the chamber and caused a lot of damage so we've had to have these meshes put on the front. We've sent them to the castle. As work was completed, scaffolding came down level by level. And it's here on ground level where we can clearly see another problem the towers faced. It's been gradually moving over the past 800 years. In fact, the tower's south wall is now nine inches higher than the north. So in the early 1990s, a unique underpinning system was installed in the tower foundations to stabilize this long-standing movement. But more recently, it was the drainage system that was causing the problem. Before we, we carried out the work, water was actually going into that chamber. There's elements of, of iron and steel work in there which could potentially rust uh, and cause, cause further problems. So, so we basically refurbished that and made sure that it's watertight. Water getting in allows frost to, to crack stonework. It allows bits of ironwork that the Victorians put in to hold things together to rust, which, which creates other problems. So basically, we're, we're slowing the process uh, as much as we, we practically can. The Heritage Lottery funding enabled further improvements to be made inside. But how did the disruption affect the day-to-day -day running of the church? People have been very patient in putting up with it. I think the most disruption came just before Christmas when we decided that we needed to sand the parquet floor in where the pews stand and then absolute chaos reigned for a couple of weeks and there was dust absolutely everywhere. So there was a massive clean up one day because we had a funeral the next day so we needed to get the church back in action and immaculate again. <laughs> By Christmas, the now glass panelled oak door was in situ and the new flooring down. At Christmas time, there was a group of school children from the church school, nine-year-olds came in, and one little boy walked through the door and just went, wow, it looks amazing in here. Have you had a new floor down? And it's like, yeah, well, thank you for noticing. We have, actually. And literally, it had just been laid. You know, the floor was brand new, and he, he was quite taken aback on how great it looked. The new year saw further improvements outside. Meanwhile, high up in the bell tower, work continued. And the rickety old spiral staircase. It too needed a little TLC. With building work complete, it was time for the plastic sheeting, which had been protecting the organ pipes from dust, to finally come down. Colours off, it was time for some fine tuning. There's 61 pipes and the compass along here. There's, there's 61 uh, notes which we have to go through and tune and make sure it's sounding as it should. So that involves, you know, the next couple of hours now and going through everything carefully and checking everything's okay.
At the beginning of the project, we employed Heather Cyril, who is our um, heritage mentor. And she's produced all these leaflets and banners and all sorts of things. So when visitors come through the door, and especially if they're visiting from elsewhere, because you do get visitors that go and see the castle, then come here. Um, you know, we can give them information and stuff that looks good. So uh, we're very grateful to her. And look out for Mr Reaper, the Crypt Keeper. He'll take you on a historical tour down into the vault. And the church has welcomed some very distinguished guests. of Hardwick popped in just to see how we were uh, getting on with the works and things and she was very impressed. Part of the funding as well was took into account volunteer time so um, we, we estimated how much volunteer time this project has taken and it's taken a lot a lot of volunteer time and without the volunteers and without people's goodwill then we wouldn't have again been able to, to, uh, to complete this project. It's a team effort in, in doing these jobs. I mean, Rachel's done a fantastic amount of work um, in, in getting the money together and, and, and making the project work. The builders um, have done a fantastic job. I mean, they are, they're very good stonemasons. They've, they've gone the extra mile to, to, to make things work and, and to do a decent job. I think it's, it's worked really well. We're very grateful to the Heritage Lottery Fund for the grant that they awarded us and to the Garfield Weston and to All Churches Trust and for the people that have raised money as well because without their help and support, this project wouldn't have happened. What I would like to say to people is that this is a beautiful Grade 2 star listed building and please do come and see us visit this place and see what treasures it has to offer for you. It would be great to see you.